particular video I would like us to re look at resistors in series and parallel resistors in series and parallel and combinations of both okay a series network this is lovely and easy for you we've got well let's have a point a uh, R1, R2, I'm using the American symbols for resistors here, which is my normal preference. Okay, here's the network points is A and B, R3, it's going to go there, of course. And when resistors are in series, very, very simple, all you do is to find the total resistance. In this case, it would be resistance between A and B is just going to be the sum of all three and no more complicated than that. OK. Let's have a look, see if I can scroll down a bit because this bit is a bit more involved. Parallel. Resistors. Okay, parallel resistors. Uh, why don't I draw a network of three resistors again? About this one. But this time, between A and B, they are all going to be in parallel. R3, R2, R1. Okay. So then you think to yourself, I can see uh, the sense in adding resistances together when they are in series. That makes a lot of sense. What about parallel? What you may already know a formula in advance, but you think, well, where does the formula come from? And why is it that formula? Well, let me explain a concept to you known as admittance. Okay. And effectively, admittance is given the symbol Y, and it is just one over the resistance. In more complicated circuits, it could be one over impedance, etc. But we're just happy to be looking at resistors here, um, DC networks in particular. Okay, so when you look at the concept of admittance, you're looking down from A and B, and you're seeing the admittance um, from the point of view of AB. So R1 admits. R2 admits and R3 admits, admits what? Well, admits current, essentially, okay? So we can write Y, A, B, Y, T, if you like, T for total, is going to be Y1, meaning the admittance of R1, Y2, the admittance of R2, plus Y3, the admittance of R3, or another way to write this is, therefore, because we know that admittance is 1 over resistance, we can then explain all these terms like so. We'll write them all underneath, and hopefully that explains it for you. Uh, let me go back to white. I'm going to write one over the resistance between A and B 
So I'm basically I'm transforming admittances to resistances, which I can do as long as I do it to both sides, that's fine. It is going to be equal to one over R1 plus one over R2. Try to get these vertically aligned. Uh, plus one over R3. Okay, so hopefully you may have seen that many times before and you wondered where it come from. Well, that's where it comes from up there, all that purple stuff. Okay. You can go even further and you can say, I'll get a common denominator for all of this stuff. And I get, then I'll get these two fractions and I'll turn them upside down. So let's have a go at trying that first of all. We're going to do the common denominator. So we have one over the resistance between A and B, or one over R subscript B A B is equal to, well, what's the common denominator? It's going to be the product of, let me see if I can find another color for you, the product of these three terms in the individual denominator. So a nice easy common denominator is the product of all three. Okay, so how about R1, R2, R3 in there. And if you remember from your school days, then you divide R1 into the common denominator, multiply by this thing at the top here, which is one, and you end up with R2, R3. And we put the plus sign in, and we're looking at how many times does R2 here go into the common denominator? Well, the answer is R1, R3 times, times the one, which is R1, R3. Okay, we do the same for the last term. How many times does R3 go into our common denominator? It goes in R1, R2 times. Okay. Now, what we did say earlier was we don't want to know what 1 over RAB is. We want to know what RAB over 1 is. And RAB over 1 is just RAB. In other words, that's the resistance between A and B. That's what we're hoping to determine. So I'm going to flip these now. So flip upside down. Sounds a bit like an insult, but it's not meant to be. So I'm going to flip these upside down. And therefore we have resistance between A and B is equal to R1, R2, R3 over R2, R3 plus R1, R3 plus R1, R2. Hope I've written that down correctly. Now, what you'll notice about this is it's the product, meaning multiply everything. So it's the whole product over. Well, we have a sum of one of these things here. That's a product. That's a product. That's a product. The multipliers and these things are sums. There's a sum. There's a sum. So the product over. The sum of products. That's a good way to remember that. Okay. Now then, what happens? And this this is um, applicable for any resistors, um, two or more. Um, that's the general formula which always works. Now then, there is an easier one to remember um, when we have. Uh, Shall I say with two parallel resistors only? We have a simplification. Okay, let me draw that for you. So here's a network, parallel network with two resistors. Okay, R1, R2, and we have A and B here. And again, I will use the general formula that we worked out earlier. One over the resistance between A and B 
is equal to 1 over the first resistor plus 1 over the second resistor plus 1 over the, hang on a minute, we don't have a third resistor, so that's it, okay? So we stop here. Then, if you were to find a common denominator for these two guys here, all you're doing is you multiply them together, okay? So we'll have R1, R2 there, then we find out how many times R1 goes into R1, R2, it goes in that many times. Put the plus in. Let me look at this second one here. How many times does R2 go into R1, R2? It goes in R1 amount of times. Okay. So now why don't we flip these things? Okay. So I'm going to flip this. I'm going to flip this. And I should find RAB. Okay, let's have a get that. So, therefore, let's put the three dots in symbol for therefore, obviously. RAB over 1 is the same as 1 over RAB. So, RAB over 1 is a waste of ink. So, you don't write over 1, don't need to. Equals this thing here, flipped. Okay, so R1, R2 over. And, well, R2 plus R1 is the same as R1 plus R2. Put the 1 before the 2. So R1 plus R2. Which is the same as saying it's the product. Product of R1 and R2 divided by the sum. And we'll just add R1 and R2 together. Okay. And that's pretty much how you go about these. Let's have a look at a hybrid circuit, perhaps. So a hybrid circuit, shorthand CCT. Uh, how's about using A and B a lot? So let's carry on in that vein. Got this, this a resistor here. It's not the most neat diagram, but it doesn't need to be at the moment. And here we go. I've got R1, R2, and R3. Now, can you see that here, R2 and R3 form a parallel branch, okay? If you were a charged particle traveling down this circuit you're going to have to negotiate all of r1 so r1 is definitely there so we can say uh, i'm going to stay with this color now so rab is equal to definitely r1 and then you have to add something now you add something when you arrive at this junction here you can either go down r2 or down r3 and most charged particles will want to go down the path of least resistance. And that's something we cover in another video shortly. Um, but in this case, we have R2 and R3. I've drawn the loop around them. They are simply just a parallel network. And then your charged particles all join up. And then they all travel down that way. Back to where they came from, or the opposite side of the battery, if you like. Okay. That is supposed to be an arrowhead. Okay, so it's just the parallel combination of these two resistors, R2 and R3. And quite often you might see that written as R2, two forward slashes, R3. So that lot means R2 and R3 in parallel. And we would say, therefore, R1 plus product, which is that, over the sum which is quite simply that. Okay, let's have a look and go back to white and I'm going to have a look at some examples for you, put some numbers into the theory. So example one, why don't we try series circuit A? I'm going to do 
three resistors. We haven't. I've got a one K. Well, be scientific and put gomes in. One kilo, two point two kilo. That's a lowercase k, by the way, or it should be. Okay, and uh, five point six space lowercase k omega. Uh, so what's our AB? Well, we're adding. That's all we do. So it's equal to. Yeah, I'm going to deal with kilo ohms, um, so I will make that a common factor. So bring that out. One plus two point two plus five point six, all in kilo ohms. Lowercase k, omega, and I think you find when you add those lot up, it comes to eight point eight kilo ohms. Simple as that. Okay, let's have a look at, maybe I'm gonna change color here to make it a bit more readable as the page progresses. Example two, uh, here I'm going to do a simple parallel network. Okay, A and B, I'm gonna have maybe a 3k here 3k omega I'm not missing omega because i forget it it's just easier sometimes just to write the k in 3k is 6k and quite often um you will find simulation software does the same thing okay so what's rab in this instance here make sure i put that join in there so rab is what well it's simply a parallel branch so it's going to be a product over some okay so i'm going to have and watch this notation that's quite useful for you it's going to be product which is 3k 3000 times 6k so 3000 times 6000 think about that one over 3k plus 6k so at the top here, we're going to multiply the numbers first of all. So we get three times six is 18. K times K means, well, a thousand times a thousand and a thousand times a thousand is a million, which we normally denote the symbol capital M to for mega. 3K plus 6K on the bottom here is quite simply 9K. Okay, 18 over nine is two. M over K means a million over a thousand, and that's a thousand. So it's two kilos. Okay, that saves a lot of messing about with loads of zeros all over the place. Good, let's have a look at yes, another example. Um, maybe I can switch back to white here. Okay. Example three. Here we go. How about another parallel network, but this time with three resistors in place? Okay. A and B again. Uh, this is going to be 6K. Let's put another resistor in here. Make this maybe 3K. And another one over to the far left. Let's have that as say 2k. Okay. So we write one over RAB is equal to this is just the general e equation or expression um, for resistors in parallel. So it's equal to it's equal not minus equal to 1 over 2k plus 1 over 3k plus 1 over 6k 
Now, you can do all that lot on your calculator. I could have a go at it now in my head. So, 1 over 2 is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. 1 over k is milli. 0 0.5 milli. 1 over 3 is 0 point. 333 three, three recurring, which means 0 0.3 with a dot over the 3. Nice shorthand. Uh, milli, okay. Plus 1 over 6, I think is 0 0.1666 recurring. So 0 0.1666 forever, which is a dot over there, and then another milli there. Okay, and then when you add this lot up together, you end up with 0 0.5, 0 0.333333, 0 0.166666 is 1 milli. Okay, but it's upside down. It's 1 over our resistance is 1 milli or 0 0.001 if we want. No. 0.001. This is one over resistance, so it's actually um, admittance. So it's given a symbol S for Siemens. Okay, very big German company. Got, got the same name, of course. Therefore, RAB is one over a milli, which is that much. So it's one kilo okay and the long-winded way to do that was to employ this thing here and plug all the values into that it would give you the correct answer but sometimes it's easier just to go down the short route okay okay so we've had a few examples there um, let me just finish off with another one for you. And this is a nice, easy hybrid circuit again. So, example four. Uh, what can I do here? 4K. Move that over. And I have a A and a B again here. I'll put 4K there, put this is to here, which could be 2K, and another 2K here. And we're asked to find RAB, which is equal to, so again, imagine yourself being a charged particle, so it was a good way to anticipate what the nature of the circuit ahead is. So you're moving in that direction and you've got no choice but to travel all the way through a 4K. So it's at least 4K plus then you get to this point here. Maybe it should be a bit more consistent with the colours I'm using. So you get to there and the sum goes down there. Some particles go down there. And then along there, and then over here, and then they join up again, and they've safely navigated through that parallel uh, mini network, if you like. Okay, so then you're going to be looking at the parallel bit there, and it's just going to be a 2K and a 2K in parallel. And a quick tip for you so when you have two resistors in parallel and they have the same value then you just split one of them in half and you say okay it's going to be half of one of them in other words here it would be 1k and just to prove that let's do that so 2k times 2k all over 2k plus 2k which is going to give 4k plus, okay, along the top here, two twos, four, K times K means a thousand times a thousand, which is four million or four mega. Use capital M for that. Two K plus two K is four K. Okay, so it 
would appear that we've got 4k plus 4 over 4 is 1 and m over k means a million over a thousand which is k so overall here a b uh sees 4 plus 1 it sees 5 kilos okay now then there is a nice piece of software and it's free by the way uh, it's called tina ti and i'm going to show you it now um, because this thing will actually tell you what the resistance of a network is provided you take out any battery sources etc okay so here it is uh, i'm going to click on the well i already have put here yeah, put a, a random network in here and i put an ohm meter on the right here in the circuit now then just looking at this um with experience i'm seeing 6k and across the 6k i have this r3 and r4 so a four and a four and we've just determined that if you have two resistors in parallel and they're the same value then the total um, effect of those two resistors is a single resistor of half the value of one of these so in other words a four and a four in parallel will produce me an overall resistance of two k of course that 2k is going to be in series with that 1k there okay so two and one gives me three all that three ohms is those three resistors it comes to three ohms and that three ohms is across r2 so you quick sums and you get okay so we have three and a six in parallel again product over sum three sixes are 18 3 plus 6 is 9, 18 over 9, so I'm expecting this to come to 2k, let me do a quick simulation, analysis, DC analysis, calculate nodal voltages, and here we go, it says over here, 2 kilo ohms, so it's done the calculation for you, so any DC network like this, you're going to know what the, uh, what the resistance is in advance. So therefore, if you make mistakes, you can always look back and revise them. Okay, hopefully this has been useful for you and uh, see you in the next video.